Hello everybody, hope you're doing well, and thanks for joining us for another video. Which, this one is actually somewhat inspired by a comment that I received on this recent video that I did. Now, if you've not already seen this video, what it is, is it's looking over some of the photos and the videos from Apollo that I analysed as part of some live discussions that I had with Jaron Campanella about whether or not the moon landings were real or fake. And during which, I was showing some examples where multiple photos were taken showing the same regions of the moon, but taken from slightly different perspectives, and how we can overlay these photos so that you can see how the change in vantage point causes parallax to the scenery in the distance. Something which would not happen if the background was a static image on a studio wall. And someone commented asking if this could be put into a format that would allow them to be shown as a 3D image to get a true sense of depth. So in this video, I'm going to be showing some of the Apollo photos that I found where I've been able to convert them into a 3D image. And I'll have two different approaches for how I'm going to be displaying them for everyone to see. One of the methods is cross-eyed where I'll put the photos on the screen side by side, and if you cross your eyes until you can sort of see three images appearing in your vision and then focus on the center image, this is basically your right eye is viewing the left side image and your left eye is viewing the right side image, and the bit in the middle is the result of your brain merging them together. However, I appreciate not everybody can do that or would be comfortable doing that because it can strain your eyes. So I've also made some anaglyph versions, which is where the images are overlaid on each other. One of the images is turned red, the others turned cyan. You will, however, require some coloured glasses like these in order to view them. Thankfully, though, if you don't already have a pair of these, they're very cheap to buy online. So, for each of the examples that I've found, I'll first present the anaglyph version, followed afterwards by the cross-eyed version, and you can simply pause the video wherever and whenever you need to in order to view the images for longer. So, firstly, regarding the rover photographs that I showed in the previous video that someone was asking if I could make those 3D, unfortunately I tried, but they don't convert very well. The main issue, aside from one of the photos being very heavily blurred across a significant portion of the photo, is that the objects like the antenna and the TV camera are very close to the vantage point, so there's a very significant shift in their positions between the photos. So when you try and overlay them for a 3D image, you get a lot of ghosting, and that makes the image very difficult to view. However, I did notice that when you zoom in to only the area that's very far away from the camera, so you remove those ghosting obstructions, there is clear depth that becomes visible. So, this showed a definite proof of concept. However, it clearly would struggle to work effectively when there's objects very close to the camera. I did also, incidentally, try the photos from Apollo 15 that I showed in the previous video, looking out across Hadley Rill. Unfortunately, these didn't translate too well either. I think there was just too much of a shift in perspective that, because they were taken from completely different stations. However, don't panic. I've spent quite a bit of time digging through the Apollo archives and I was able to find several other examples that have worked a lot better. For example, we have this shot of Pete Conrad on Apollo 12 as he is first exiting the lunar module. Al Bean, who is taking the photos, actually took four of them, with slight changes in the camera's position between them. So I was able to merge two of them together to create this anaglyph version, which I personally think looks very incredible and definitely gives a three-dimensional depth. And here is the cross-eyed version. Now, as a tip for anyone who's trying the cross-eyed version, I often find it helps if you start with the screen further away from you whilst you first get it focused and then once you've got locked onto that image and you can see the 3D depth, 
move yourself slowly closer to the image in order to make it a bit bigger and easier to see. It was quite tricky, though, finding examples that really worked well, because ideally, you would have the photos taken with the camera aiming in the same direction. But very rarely were the astronauts moving the camera's position sideways. The main times they seemed to have done this was when they were getting close-up photographs of things on the ground in front of them. However, ideally, I was looking for examples that showed the vast landscape of the moon. But typically, whenever they were taking photos of this, it was part of panoramas where the astronauts were just turning on the spot. Thankfully, though, this can still work to some extent because the camera was on the astronaut's chest. So the camera itself wasn't turning on the spot. It was sweeping in an arc. So where there's an overlap between two photographs, there is the potential for creating one of these 3D effects. However, the struggle was finding suitable framings with enough overlap to give a good size 3D result. Because any part of the photographs that aren't overlapping and aren't appearing in both photos need to be cropped out. For example, I found these photographs during Apollo 17, looking across these layers of rocks that are near the camera, all situated on the edge of a crater. So not only do we have the layering of the rocks in the foreground, but then there's a jump across to the opposite side of the crater. And then not only that, but there's another smaller crater just a bit further away. And I found this one worked really well, because even though it was part of a panorama, there wasn't much rotation between one photo to the next. So there was quite a lot of overlap, meaning that even after cropping, we're still left with quite a wide image. But the bigger problem that I was finding is that ideally, you don't want objects that are changing position between the photos. That's why 3D camera setups often shoot the photos simultaneously. However, on Apollo, not only were the photos being shot sequentially, but often the other astronauts in view. So, for example, there's this photo of the landing site of Apollo 12, but the astronaut's position changes between the two photos. So when you turn it 3D, you get really clear depth in some areas, such as below the lunar module. However, the change in the astronaut's position does then unfortunately cause some ghosting to appear. Or there's this photo taken during Apollo 16 of the rover with one of the astronauts standing next to it. And when viewed as an anaglyph, there is some depth to it. However, the rover antenna is ghosting because as you can see in the side-by-side -side version, the astronaut is actually moving the directional antenna whilst the photos are being taken, which unfortunately means the antenna is in a different position between the two photos. So this is causing that ghosting effect in the 3D versions. I actually hit a similar issue with this quite famous photo from Apollo 16 of John Young saluting the American flag whilst jumping in the air. He actually jumped twice and both of the jumps were photographed. However, there was a slight change in his body shape between the two jumps, which does cause a slight ghosting. However, the 3D effect is still quite noticeable and I think the result is such a cool image that I just couldn't not include it in the video. In fact, here's another flag salute photo, this time of astronaut James Irwin during Apollo 15. I think the 3D effect of this one is more apparent than the one I just showed because Irwin doesn't really move between the photos, so there's less ghosting. Plus, the rover on the previous example was next to the lunar module, whereas on this one it's parked much closer to the camera, which gives an extra layer of depth. Although, I think my absolute favourite flag salute one is this of Gene Cernan during Apollo 17. Now, I had to brighten the photos up quite a bit on some of these to make them visible, and you may struggle to get focus on this one with the anaglyph version. I actually found that I had to go slightly cross-eyed whilst focusing on the rover to get my eyes to lock onto this one. And the cross-eyed version takes a bit of practice, but once my eyes fixed onto it, I absolutely love the depth of this image because they've planted the flag quite a distance from the lunar module. And then there's the mountains off in the distance. So it just looks like a fantastic 3D photo. 
Then there's another great one here from Apollo 17, taken close to the rear corner of the rover. Now this naturally gives some good depth because we're looking down the rover, so obviously the front of the rover is much further from the camera, but then also off in the distance, we have the lunar module and some of the ground experiments that they had set up as well, which all adds another layer, including the terrain off in the distance. And this process works not only for the photos on the moon, but I even found some great examples from above the moon. Because whilst two of the astronauts were on the lunar surface, each mission had a third astronaut sitting in lunar orbit on board the command module, during which time they were often taking photographs of the moon. And because they were orbiting, that means that even if the camera stays in the same place in the craft window, the whole craft is moving, which means sequential photos will have a shift in perspective. And thus, you can get 3D effects like this one. The most striking example I was able to get, I think, was of the Sarkovsky crater, which is certainly a very unique looking crater, that's for sure. But another thing the command module pilot would often photograph as well was the lunar module, especially on the return from the surface, such as this example of LM-12, the lunar module Challenger from Apollo 17. This was often done as an inspection for the benefit of the engineers back on Earth to make sure that the craft wasn't sustaining damage during liftoff from the lunar surface. I think there's some 3D effect to this one, however it's probably made slightly less noticeable by a combination of the plain black background as well as the somewhat limited depth between the front and back of the lunar module that's actually visible in relation to the camera. However, whilst the command module pilot was often photographing the lunar module, on occasion the lunar module pilot would also photograph the command service module, such as this example. This was likely done to show the exposed sim bay that was inside the service module. And the 3D effects work quite well with this because not only have you got the moon in the background, but the CSM is angled quite nicely. So the front of it is very close to the lunar module. So you get that change in visible distance between the front and the back. Plus with the sim bay being exposed, it adds a lot of three dimensional detail as well. Now, I don't think this one worked quite as effectively, but I couldn't not include it. This is a photo taken from on board the command module looking over the lunar module whilst they were docked together in lunar orbit. And you can not only see the moon's surface, but also the Earth. Unfortunately, I don't think the anaglyph version worked particularly well. There seems to be quite a bit of ghosting with this one. However, the cross-eye version seemed to fare up a bit better in my opinion. However, from an example that didn't work quite as well as I had hoped, to this one from Apollo 14 of the lunar module, which worked even better than I was expecting. I honestly didn't hold much hope for this one due to the amount of glare from the sun that's in the photos. However, I'm glad I tried it anyway, because I think the results look very striking, especially with the layering of the flag and the antenna next to the lunar module. Or there's this one that's looking at the back of the Apollo 15 lunar module, and at first glance, it doesn't seem like much is going on. But when done in 3D, there's actually quite a lot of depth here. There's the straps hanging down near the camera, which give us good depth through to the engine belt, then on the left side of the photo, there's another astronaut with the rover amongst some of the ground equipment that they had set up. And I think it's incredible how much some of these images are really brought to life with this 3D shift. Then we have another one from Apollo 15, which I really like, which is this one where they parked the rover near the edge of Hadley Valley. And apart from some unfortunate minor ghosting on the astronaut, we do see some lovely depth with the rover itself, as well as the terrain as it layers and drops down into the valley. Or another cool rover photo, this time from Apollo 16, where it was parked next to the lunar module. And again, some great depth can be seen. The only downside to this one though, is there is some sort of a staining that's present on the film, which left very noticeable streaks running through the photos. 
I was able to reduce this quite a bit in Photoshop using the heel tool, however I wasn't able to get rid of all of it. And finally, another one of my favourites, even though this one has a bit of ghosting as well, is a view of one of the astronauts with the rover and various pieces of equipment laid out around it that gives some very nice depth. But then there's also the mountain in the background, which shows depth to it as well. And I think I like this one, not only because you get a sense of how far the rover and the astronaut are from the camera, but you can also see the slope of the mountain in the distance which shows this isn't some sort of a flat backdrop. And for anyone that might suggest it's maybe done with miniatures and a static astronaut, there is actually some ghosting to the astronaut because he was moving between the photos. So there we have it, converting some of the Apollo lunar photos into 3D. I personally think it really brings them to life. There were a few other examples that I found and probably plenty more potential ones lurking in the archives that I could find if I tried. So who knows, maybe I'll do another one of these in the future. But for now, that's going to wrap things up. Which photo do you think look best? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please do consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.